Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called Pizza Raccoons, an original story written for you by Will Martin and edited for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. Pizza Raccoons Once upon a time, on the edge of a sprawling forest, there glowed the neon lights of a tiny pizzeria known as Giuseppe's. Despite its small size and remote location, this pizzeria drew hungry people from miles around. Word traveled fast in these parts, and the pizzeria had a knack for creating perfect pies, finely fired in an old brick oven. The pizza was so delicious, it was nearly impossible not to tell everyone you knew about it. That is, once you'd had enough time to chew and swallow. For long miles around, people were talking about this pizza. But not just people. The animals were talking, too. You see, smell also traveled fast, especially through the forest. And the critters who relied on their noses could smell those delicious pizza pies cooking every time they took a breath. All day long, if you knew how to listen for it, you could hear the chatter throughout the trees. In the morning, the birds would chirp, Tweet, tweet! My beak smells pizza smells! If only there weren't windows and we could fly right in! As the sun set, the mosquitoes would drone in their high-pitched buzz. Pizza! Pizza! If only they didn't have a bug zapper! And at night, the wolves howled. Fresh mushroom and asiago. If only our paws could open doors. Everyone in those woods wanted a taste of Giuseppe's pizza, but none believed that they could get it. None except for one animal whose love of mischief and natural ability to get into and out of trouble made them more cunning than the rest. What's more, this animal's favorite food in the whole world was pizza, and they would do anything just to get a slice. Of course, that animal was the raccoon. And if there was one group of critters in the whole wide world that could figure out how to get that delicious Giuseppe's pizza, it was them. The raccoon's leader was a bouncy boy named Bandit. Bandit was the most fearless of all the raccoons. He'd been known to knock over trash barrels in search of delicious scraps while the sun was still up, even before the streetlights turned on. Once, he held his ground to a dog five times his size just to steal its bowl of kibble. He was always the first one in and the last one out of every can of garbage the group pilfered, or swimming pool they crashed on those sweaty summer nights. There was a reason Bandit was so bold. He believed his status as the group's leader came from their respect for his daring deeds. So he was always pushing the limits to make sure the other raccoons were suitably impressed. So one night, Bandit waited and watched with his crew of raccoons under the cover of darkness. They were in the bustling bushes, where the trees met the glowing lights of Giuseppe's pizzeria. Had anyone stepped out of the back door of the shop at that moment and looked out into the forest, they would have seen nothing but the glow of dozens of tiny eyes gazing back at them. This, by the way, is why we call a group of raccoons a gaze. Bandit's closest friend and right-hand raccoon, Rory, spoke in her hushed voice from the darkness. At the end of each night... Giuseppe walks through the back door with all the extra pizzas that weren't picked up that day, she whispered. He throws them into that big dumpster along with the unused ingredients. A smaller raccoon named Pip piped up. Well, that seems wasteful. Bandit shook his head slowly. Definitely wasteful. It's basically our civic duty to make sure those perky pies get eaten, he said. They spent the next few hours hatching a plan to get those perfect pizzas all to themselves. They'd wait until right before dawn when they could be sure no one was working at the pizzeria to foil their scheme. Then, Bandit, because he was the bravest and the leader, would sneak out of the woods and climb into the dumpster. 
Next, the two biggest, strongest members of the raccoon tribe, Brute and Brent, would carry a branch into an old elm tree that hung over the dumpster. They'd drop the branch into the dumpster, hanging over one side, to create a ramp that would make it easy for Bandit to get out, since his good climbing paws would be full of pizzas. It was a perfect plan, one that they all knew was going to work. So, they retreated from the edge of the forest to find cozy places to get some sleep. Nestled among the roots and leaves of the forest floor, all the raccoons dreamt of the pizza feast that awaited them. All, that is, except for Bandit. Bandit couldn't sleep, and his beady eyes glowed among the snores of the other raccoons. What if I climbed into that dumpster by myself? What if I pinched those pizzas and brought them back before anyone woke up, he said to himself. It'd be my most daring act yet. I'd be a hero, a legend. I'd be the leader for life. Having convinced himself, Bandit snuck off to go try something so risky that only he could have thought it up. At the edge of the woods, Bandit rubbed his paws together. The pizzeria's lights were off, nothing moved inside the building, and the delicious smell of pizza was wafting from the dumpster they'd spotted earlier that night. Slowly he crept, quiet as a mouse, out from the edge of the forest and into the clearing behind Giuseppe's. He counted each footstep as he got closer to the delicious dumpster that held within its metal walls a paradise of pizza. Slowly, carefully, step by step. Finally, he made it to the dumpster. He took one last deep breath to summon his courage, shimmied up the side, opened the lid, and tumbled in. Ooh, heaven is a place on earth, Bandit sang to himself, surrounded by boxes and boxes of the most delicious pizza he'd ever sniffed. He immediately got to work, snatching up box after box after box of Giuseppe's pies. Once his arms were full, He tried to climb up the inside of the dumpster and back to his friends, except he couldn't. The pizza was heavier than he expected, and the walls of the dumpster were taller than he remembered. Worse, they were all slick with grease from the pizzas, and it made them impossible to climb. The branch ramp they'd planned to drop down into the dumpster from the elm tree had seemed like a convenience, but Bandit now realized it was a necessity. Oh. What now? he mused. Then, Bandit heard a terrible groaning, moaning, ratcheting, rattling noise coming from outside. It was deafeningly loud, and it was getting even louder and closer. Suddenly, something smashed into the side of the dumpster, ka-chunk, and the whole thing began to shake. Deep in the forest, where the other raccoons had set up camp, A low, rumbling noise woke some of the lighter sleepers. Then, a voice cut through the night. Help me! Now everyone was awake. That voice was bandits. The raccoons leapt out from where they slept and rushed towards the noise, towards Giuseppe's pizzeria. The group arrived just in time to see the dumpster full of pizzas with bandits' gleaming eyes inside. A mechanical arm had grabbed the dumpster by its sides and was picking it up off the ground. That arm was attached to a massive, grunting, snorting, growling garbage truck. The raccoons watched helplessly as Bandit and the pizzas were dumped from the dumpster into the back of the truck. That's a g-g-garbage truck, Rory stammered as if she'd seen a ghost. The rest of the group was silent. From a young age, all raccoons are taught to steer clear of garbage trucks. Parent raccoons would lecture endlessly, telling their little ones, No matter how much you want to eat trash, never, ever try to get it from a garbage truck. It may look like a buffet on wheels, but garbage trucks mean trouble, and not the kind you can get out of. And when young raccoons grew into older, more mature raccoons, their parents would tell them why. At the end of every garbage truck's route, there's a trash compactor. 
It's a big, loud, scary machine, even scarier and louder than a garbage truck. The trucks dump the trash into the compactor, and the compactor turns all the trash into a tiny little cube, along with anything else that was in the truck. Rory let out a shudder as she thought about where that garbage truck was headed and what might happen to her friend Bandit. But that was all the time she had to think, because at that moment, the mechanical arm slammed the empty dumpster back to the ground. The garbage truck shifted into gear and lurched forward, down the hill that led to the dump, where the trash compactor waited. Quick! Rory shouted to the rest of the group. We have to save Bandit. Now, one thing you need to know about raccoons is that even though they spend a lot of their time loafing around people's garbage cans, eating trash, lazing, lounging, and generally living the good life, they are very, very surprisingly fast. Before the words were even out of Rory's mouth, the whole group had climbed into the trees that ran along the hill leading to the dump, all to chase that clanging, thumping, belching garbage truck. The group leapt from tree to tree, finding their footing at just the last second before scampering across a bow and leaping to the next. But no matter how fast they scurried, the garbage truck was faster. It was getting farther and farther away from the raccoons and closer and closer to that terrible trash compactor. Rory was envisioning Bandit being smushed into a cube, but then she had an idea. Up ahead at the bottom of the hill was an intersection with a traffic light. Rory knew from her adventures in the neighborhoods looking for trash that these lights told the cars on the road where to go. She knew green meant go and red meant stop. At nighttime, since there wasn't much traffic, this light was almost always green. But Rory also knew about another light at the intersection, one with a little walking man on it. She knew this because she'd seen children coming home from school press a button that turned that light on. And she knew that whenever the walking man lit up, the light that controlled the traffic was always red and everyone driving had to stop to let the kids cross the street. Before she could second-guess herself, she plucked a pine cone off a branch as she ran, took aim, and hurled it as hard as she could at that button. The pine cone cut a perfect arc through the night sky, its hardened scales sticky with sap and gleaming in the light of the moon as it tumbled end over end. The whole forest stood still. Even the wind held its breath, no longer rustling through the leaves. Off in the distance, a single great horned owl asked its mysterious question to the night from somewhere in the top of the trees. Hoo, 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 hoo. The pine cone fell through the air and hit the button smack in the center. The traffic light turned red and the walking man lit up as a mechanical voice chirped out, Walk sign is on to cross. The brake lights of the garbage truck blazed red and it sputtered to a stop at the red light. In the blink of a gleaming little eye, the raccoons were out of the trees and closing the distance between themselves and the truck. Rory was the first to make it and she climbed nimbly up on the side. Her tiny little hands found the controls at the rear and began furiously pushing buttons and pulling levers. We're here to get you, Bandit, she called. Rory, thank you, Bandit shouted, muffled inside. Then Rory pulled another lever, and there came a scrunching, bunching, crunching noise. Uh, it's all starting to smush in here. Hold on, wrong lever, Rory called out. She pushed it back up and tried a few others. Shortly, there came a beclang noise from the back of the truck. The huge metal door that held all the garbage in was opening, slowly at first, but then more and more. As soon as it was wide enough, Bandit came flying out the back, covered in banana peels, coffee grounds, and bits of torn paper. He was shaken up, but safe and sound. The raccoons all cheered, and darted away from the truck, back to the safety of the trees. As the light turned green and the garbage truck rumbled off to its destination, Rory turned to a slightly worse-for-wear bandit. What were you thinking? 
We had a plan, she shouted. Bandit hung his head in shame. I know, you guys, I know. But you guys made me the leader because I take big risks and I seem fearless. So I thought tonight I could steal the pizzas myself and surprise everyone. But I let you down. I understand if you don't want me to be the leader anymore. Rory shook her head and laughed. That's not why you're the leader, Bandit. We made you the leader because you're funny and fun to hang out with. And you always have great ideas about where to find the best trash. But mostly, it's because you always, always share. Even tonight, your plan wasn't to take all the pizza for yourself. It was to bring it back for all of us. That's why we love you, buddy. That whole being risky thing was just something we figured made you happy. But that's not why you're the leader. The pair hugged, and all the other raccoons piled on, happy and laughing. All together now, they started the long walk back up the hill to the pizzeria. Wait, Bandit said, doing a quick head count. Are we missing somebody? And as if to answer his question, he heard a low growl. At first, he thought it was just his hungry, pizza-less stomach, but then the growl grew louder and louder until it was a rumbling roar. Bandit and the rest of the raccoons looked up to see a large, dark, rectangular shape careening down the hill right at them. Was it another garbage truck sent to finish the job the first had started? Look out, shouted Rory. And then they heard another sound, the unmistakable hooting and hollering of happy raccoons. Out into the light cast from a street lamp sailed a dumpster with the words Giuseppe's Pizzeria written in bold letters. On top of the dumpster, grinning from ear to ear, were the two biggest, strongest raccoons, Brute and Brent. The dumpster sped through the intersection on its wheels and crashed into the curb, tipping over on its side and sending the two large raccoons flying into the dirt and brambles. Brute picked himself up, dusting off his fur. Ha ha! We missed a whole dumpster around the other side of the pizzeria! He laughed. Brent rolled out from under a bush, picking nettles from his tail. We spotted it right when that garbage truck picked up Bandit, and we knew we weren't fast enough to help too much in the rescue mission, but we figured you guys would be pretty hungry by the time you saved him. Then he walked over to the dumpster and used his tiny little paws to flip open the lid. Oh, my cheese, whispered Bandit. Inside the dumpster were over a hundred pizzas, practically untouched. The smell that came from the dumpster was intoxicating, especially to a raccoon. Looks like that garbage truck had no idea about this other dumpster either, on account of how many pizzas are in it, said Brent proudly. Doesn't look like anyone's been to empty it out for weeks. Everyone, called Rory. Let's eat. Hooray, came the wild cheer. That night, the raccoons ate a feast bigger and more delicious than any they'd ever had. Nearly every pizza ever invented was in that dumpster. There were four cheese and pepperoni, meat lovers and veggie delight, There was pineapple pizza, which everyone had a strong opinion about one way or the other, and mushroom kale. There was even a pizza that was topped with tiny little slices of pizza. A pizza pizza! After they stuffed themselves, Bandit sat back against a log, his tummy bulging and garlicky red sauce still stuck to the tips of his whiskers. He breathed a deep sigh of relief. He'd been all wrong about the qualities he thought made him a good leader, and it had put him in danger. But his group of friends saved him without batting an eye. Licking his lips, he vowed to take it easier from now on, to work as a team instead of taking on big challenges all by himself. He had the best friends anyone could ever ask for, and he was the luckiest raccoon alive. Oh, And he also vowed to always, always remember to check for a second dumpster. The End Thanks for listening! 